so I've been meaning to get my hands on Sound Voltex for the longest time now. My first experience with the game actually dates all the way back to 2013, in the back of an arcade and an In the Groove tournament. My interest for the game, on the other hand, wouldn't be truly kickstarted until I watched Takaku's Fosse 2 controller review, where she talked pretty positively about it, especially for its $170 price tag. Since this was basically a brand new experience for me, I thought it would be fun to document my progress via a 30-day challenge. Before we get into the gameplay part though, I'd like to provide my rhythm game background first and some clarifications about how this challenge operated. I've been playing rhythm games since around 2006, with a primary focus on Step Mania, or now referred to as Eterna. I've been a top player of the game for around 6 or 7 years, and have shown proficiency in other games too, like Clone Hero, DDR, and a couple other mobile rhythm games. As for the 30 days, this was not done in 30 consecutive days at all, as my first day with the challenge started all the way back in late October. This was mainly due to my surgery in November, and some general forgetfulness and focus on other projects throughout, so this challenge isn't an exact representation of what would happen if you played the game for 30 well-focused days. It's essentially a time-lapse of my ups and downs with what I was able to learn and what my brain just couldn't comprehend at all. There's gonna be some things that I ended up finding out in hindsight, so please watch the full video with that in mind. Lastly, my sessions were fairly short, at least after the first week, as I was only playing around 45 to 65 minutes per session. With that out of the way, let's talk about how the first week went. The client I used to play Sound Voltex is unnamed SDVX clone, and I got a majority of my first charts from the in-game downloader as well. I'm not sure if these difficulties are entirely accurate, but I was feeling fairly comfortable on 11s and 12s right off the bat, with some coherency on 13s too. By day 4, Tokaku had shown me a website where I can download all the official Sound Voltex charts, so not only did I have access to the actual game now more or less, but I was able to play charts that I knew the proper difficulty of. Stumbling upon Endymion, I had already passed my first 17, but we need to keep in mind that my background is highly centralized in 4-key, so this wasn't all too surprising for me, and I didn't really consider it my first authentic 17. Day 5 was when I noticed a fair development in my fundamentals already, getting pretty good accuracy on 14s and showing some confidence in the 16s too, as shown by days 6 and 7. Coming across the 17 for Freedom Dive, I wasn't too surprised for this to be my second 17, but again, a lot of the difficulty stems from the streams. In a way, I feel like if any 17-oriented player played a couple weeks of 4-key, these realistically turn into mid or upper bound 16s. There's a great lack of exposure for these types of charts, so I feel like that's the reason why they're rated as high as they are, but I feel like mechanically it's just not at the 17s. 17 level, but I could also just be simply biased. Lastly, my scroll speed went from 390 on day 1 to 590 by day 7, so I was definitely showing some sort of comfort with the game rather quickly. Week 2 was when I started to record myself playing the game, and was also when I came back from surgery after day 8, which means I took a month off. Despite this long break, I had actually came back and passed a decent amount of 17s. This was my first major pattern blunder, and still something I somewhat struggle with. For some reason, my brain cannot process this pattern as two notes on one hand and one note on the other hand, because the orange or FX buttons take up two slots, and my forky brain cannot register it as the way it's intended to be hit. Sometimes I'll luck out and I'll hit it, but almost every time this sequence comes at me, I'm completely lost and just panic hit all the notes surrounding the pattern. There's other variations that are much worse for me too, but we'll come across them as the video goes on. What? Oh, I mixed them up. Oh my god. I'm literally doing opposite hand. <laughs> I'm doing the wrong laser. Reacting to these in my first few days of being exposed to this pattern was very annoying to deal with. I'm so used to sight reading everything without much issue in Eterna, but that's mainly because my fundamentals are so developed in that game that I don't need to react to a pattern, I can just simply read it. But in Sound Voltex in particular, there are some patterns that require a bit more preparation, since the hand movement and placements are a lot more technical. Plus the fact that I'm still a beginner, these were a decent struggle for me. 
With consistent enough playing, this will probably become a natural pattern to not have to rely on purely reaction timing. Showing the footage of me getting my ass handed to me in anything with lasers is realistically the reason why some 16s and 17s vary so much in difficulty for me. At least certain types of lasers that sometimes reverse each other or are sort of polyrhythmic. Lasers come across to me as a very feel-based aspect of Sound Voltex that makes the game stick out, and laser specialization is definitely one of the fundamentally harder skill sets to develop in this game, so I'm not all too surprised I can't handle them when they look all jumbled up. This session was going pretty well, and I decided to experiment with the 18s a bit, and to my surprise, I almost managed to pass one of the more straightforward ones. I probably could have had it if I nailed the FX buttons, but I unfortunately wasn't quick enough. Read them? What? <laughs> All right, that's a chart. That beginning so jank, dude. I gotta look up a hand camera. Cause the rest is pretty easy. I messed up the laser things, like the switchbacks or whatever, but... <laughs> easy pass, but really bad skill. Well, I'll be. I started standing up. This was the revelation that made the game so much more comfortable to play for me, and allowed me to execute one-handed patterns much better without feeling like I'm throwing my elbow into my stomach. However, there's a bit of a caveat that comes with it. Standing up for long periods of time is not for me. Part of it is because I'm a distance runner, and I don't like to spend more time on my feet than I have to, but static standing in particular really gets my hamstrings and sometimes shins hurting a bit. It's annoying, but it's part of the reason why my sessions aren't that long, but I also make sure to take breaks every few songs to accommodate. What the hell do you do there? Is that a crosshand laser? Ha! <laughs> 
What a weird ending. 950 though. Double ate it. I double ate it. I'm happy with that. There, okay. Oh, dude, <laughs> I'm killing it. Oh, my God. I didn't even know. I don't even know when that note happened. I went from TV seeing it to absolutely botching it. Ugh, the run that could have been. That is such a weird chart in the I wasn't ready for that at all. Alright, I think I'm going to try moving back down to the 16s for like 15, 20 more minutes. Because I feel like my fundamentals are so out of whack that maybe I just have to go down a difficulty or two and just try to understand what exactly I'm messing up. Because I feel like it's really hard for me to tell on like the 17s and 18s. But I don't know. It's weird. I wish there were like charts that specifically cater to what I'm bad at. Like with buttons. Like especially anything with like this combination or this or like variations of that. Like, I wish there were just charts out there, like, training charts made out there uh, just for that. Because that would help, I feel like that would help me improve so much quicker at those instead of just encountering them for, like, five seconds at a time. And then that's, you know, that's not how you get, that's not how you get good at something. fun. I like that chart a lot. That was, that was so bad to listen to. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm going to end at that. I think the biggest issue right now is... I, I'm really just not playing enough. I think that's the biggest issue. <laughs> I've been playing like once every few days, and then I took like a month off in between when I played for like a week. So... I should be playing like almost every day from here on out until day 30. So hopefully that will help me retain my muscle memory a lot better and it will help me maintain my reading a lot better. Like hopefully everything just comes into place as time goes on because I feel like when you're just playing more consistently, you're more in tune with how the game functions in general, especially if you're getting into a new game. You can't just be like playing it here and there and then expecting to like even if you get good really fast, if you take a lot of time off, you're just not really going to remember it. Like, you're going to play at your general level, but in terms of improving again, it's just going to it's gonna take you a bit until you have the motions down. Standing is pretty hard. Like, it's kind of killer on my hamstrings. So, I can only play for like an hour 15, hour 30 max, and I, I have to like sit down in between too, but I don't know. I think this is like day 11, day 12, so I got plenty of time to get good and see how close I can get to passing a 19. I know I could pass a little bit. I know I could pass an 18 within like the next week or two or not even. I think within the next week by next Sunday I can easily pass an 18. There's a couple I'm close to, but um I think I just have to scour the ones that I could do to begin with, but even then I think I can knock a couple out if I really wanted to and I just put the time in. So I don't know, I guess we'll see.
it's not that it's different than a roll. But the the patterns for them, like, they're, it's so repetitive. Like, I, it definitely doesn't go to the music. Just doing... I'm done playing. <laughs> Week two went generally fine. I spent my time starting out with 17s, fell back to 16s to try and get my fundamentals down a bit better, but then I'd get impatient and would try out the 17s again. One thing I wasn't doing this time either was trying out the slower songs in this game, as I didn't find them to be that musically interesting, but in the latter half of week 3, I decided to simmer down and really focus on lasers, because holy moly am I bad at them. There is a Google Sheet online that has these charts ranked by passability for the upper difficulties, but they also categorize these charts, which made it easy for me to pick out the laser heavy ones, except if they were written in Japanese, I couldn't find those. For the latter half of this challenge, I'm going to let the clips do most of the talking as I started to commentate a bit more over them, but I'll give my general thoughts afterwards. With that said, let's take a look at how week three went. Alright, so I played a bunch of 16s. Oh, hold on. Alright, so I played a bunch of 16s, and I'm feeling pretty confident, especially when I played the 17s afterwards. I pretty much passed every 17 I played except for one. But um, I'm going to try and pass an 18 today. I'm pretty confident I can do it. So we're going to try a couple. I'm going to look at the tier list that I found online. And we're going to see if I can pass any within uh, that range. I'm going to try and see how this goes. It's an IGPM one, so hopefully it's a bit more button focused. Shit. Oh no! I thought it switched over, dude. Oh, dude, I can get that. I forgot to move my left laser over. so easily <laughs> first 18 baby i think that's i don't know if this is day 14 or day 15 so it'd technically be two weeks of playing i think i don't know i'll have to go check but i'm hype about that i'm gonna take a look at the list and see if we can get any more tonight That was so sloppy. That should not have been a pass. But, all right, I mean, I guess we'll take it. 18 number two. I get diff spikes like have a lot of merit like they've built like it's it's climax theory like that's that it's like a cornerstone of rhythm game charting it's been around forever but I feel like it's so linear or I guess over exaggerated is a better thing and predictable in these types of games mainly Bimani games they do it a lot but even in other, in other rhythm games it happens too all right, so I've been warming up really well today. I almost PUC'd a 16 on sight read. I'll pull up the screenshot later because I was warming up, but uh, I'm also feeling pretty good on the 17, so I'm just going to run through a lot of these and see if I can get any more triple A's. I just got this warming up, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Maybe I'll go for, the, maybe I'll go for some more 18s if I'm feeling good. Uh, 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 
What the hell? How do you... What? <laughs> That's so stuck. What was that chart? <laughs> Why am I finding like the hardest seventeens possible to play now? My first 990 on a 17. That was really easy. <laughs> the dynamic between 17 dude. I'm telling you, it's insane. Like, mechanically harder, physically harder, like, in every way, it's like, it feels like a whole different difficulty. <laughs> At least I did okay on the ending. Wow, that's a really weird chart. I think that's why I couldn't do it. I, I don't know how you read the little... Like when you do these, like the quick ones in the middle, I can't tell which direction they're going, unless they're going the same direction every time, but I feel like that's super hard to differentiate. You have to have like a super keen eye, but. How did that happen? Oh my god. <gasps> what the fuck? Which way did that go? Go so fast to the left. Fuck off. Oh my- How am I supposed to know that was coming up? Alright. Alright, 
right, so I just got this score, and <laughs> it's not a pass, but I was like 67, 68% at the end. So I'm going to try this again. This is going to be the corniest 19 pass ever. But I didn't know what the 19 was like. I thought it was going to be a lot more technically proficient. But uh, if I can kind of luck myself through the ending, I think I can get it. Or if I have a high enough, uh, whatever, meter. I don't know what it's called. I still haven't taken the time to learn the terminology. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try right now. We're, we're gonna get this. <laughs> it's gonna be the corniest 19 pass ever. I got it. <laughs> First 19. It's not even a PV either. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I fulfilled my goal technically. I did pass a 19 within a month. But am I gonna count it? Not really. I kind of want to pass a more authentic 19 that isn't centralized around like a certain skill set. So until then, this is technically a 19 pass, but as a four key player, I'm not going to count it. So uh, I'm going to go for a run soon. I just wanted to play some sound voltex uh, just for a bit, just for the hell of it. And then when I discovered this, I was like, oh, I should play this <laughs> because I, I think I can get this. And uh, yeah, I'll probably have a session later on tonight, just like a, like an hour, hour and a half. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess there's my, the, I think this is like day 18, day 19, 19 pass. GG's. Oh man, these are wild, dude. <laughs> these are crazy. <laughs> I feel like when I saw this, I'm pretty sure this is one of the easier 18s from what I remember, like looking at the chart. Uh, I'm gonna check right now. I'm pretty sure it is. When I, I recognized it as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I chose it. All right, that's it tonight. That's pretty good. That was a good run for me. Really, really good sight read. Oh, my God. 
Week three was interesting, but a great success nonetheless. I went for my first PUC and could not get one for the life of me, but then on a random day, not only did I nab a 16 PUC outside of recording, but I managed to even pass my first 19. I know what I said for the 17, but this genuinely doesn't feel like a 19, even if we're trying to defend the notion of less exposure to this type of play. I've played 16s with more mechanically difficult sections, and the patterns for the streams are pretty easy all things considered, even at 222 BPM. Maybe if there was some jump stream and some trickier FX patterns to spice things up, I could see this as a 19, but I am not convinced in the slightest, but the game says it is, so we'll throw it up on the counter for fun. Generally good scores all around, as you can see I got impatient and tried doing more technical 17s, but realized I needed to learn the 16s first. Sadly, my impatience got the best of me for week 4, but in my defense this time, I realized I only had 9 days left, so I wanted to make sure I can get what I wanted to out of that time to see how much harder material I could play by then. Okay, so I know it's been a little while since I've played this game, <laughs> it's been another month, but uh, we're going to try and get back into it, we're going to see how this D-Rust session goes. The last time I D-Rusted after a longish break, uh, it really wasn't too bad. And we have about a week left before we hit day 30, so hoping to make some decent progress. I think we're just, you know, going to play around a bit. And since I only have, like, a week left, I think I'm just going to try and get as many good scores as I can. I think that's just overall the best approach. And, uh, yeah, let's just have some fun with it. Oh, nice. We'll take it. I blundered a section or two of it. Not bad. This is a good D-Rust de <laughs> session. Is that it? Oh shit. That's another 18. And a 950. Oh my god, I CB rush? I didn't even- I forgot you can even CB rush in this game. That was actually really easy. They give you a lot of free uh, HP just by um, just by those all those hold notes. It's kind of a corny 18, but I mean 940 is still not bad, all things considered. I hate that transition. I hate that pattern so much. I can't let a 960 of that. <laughs> like, going from this to this, it's just such a weirdly abrupt movement. Like, I don't like it. I get that's probably the intention, but I don't know. I kind of like when patterns all flow together and feel like they have more of a purpose instead of just like... Yeah, dude, this this chart is such a banger. It's probably one. It's like top five charts easily. Oh, I still got 980 though. All right, I'm happy with that. I get in on that. I get in on that. Day 23. Um, yeah, we got like seven days left. So, see you guys then. Okay, so maybe it's been a few more days. I thought only a couple days went by, but it turns out I haven't played in five days. But the warm-ups are going really well. Uh, I just triple A'd a 9... Or, sorry. <laughs> I just triple A'd a 17, got 971. So I'm warming up pretty well. And let's just play some things and see how the session goes. There. 
It's so obvious what I'm bad at in this game. I still 970'd it because I, I was like destroying other parts of the chart, but the second any sort of chord combinations kick in, my brain just turns off. It's also been a while since I played, so I think any improvements I made in that regard have just completely washed away. <laughs> what? Dude. Damn. 9.37. Was even close. That's what's weird about this game, man. Like, scoring is a meme at times. Like, you could score really well on something and not even come close to passing it. Because lasers just, like... They, they just dick you so hard. Like, I got 9.37, but did I actually get 9.37? <laughs> like, that's what confuses me about this game sometimes. Like, I don't know what my score actually means. Yeah, this too. I have a 9.37 on this. I'm pretty sure it's not a pass. I'm like 90% sure. Dude, that's definitely controller. I can hit those quads so easily. I don't think my controller likes really fast inputs. Dude, that chart was awesome. The ending was kind of weird. I wasn't prepared for it, but... Dude, that chart was so cool. Oh, <laughs> I PB'd by 3k. Good meme, dude. All my scores on this are so close. At least my more recent ones. I'll get it sometime, but... Alright, that is day... Oh my god, what day am I on at this point? I think I forgot to create a folder for the new newest day. Or maybe not. I forget. No, so this is day 24, I believe. So we got six days left. And uh, yeah, all things considered, good session. And I will see you guys in day 25. Hopefully soon. Hopefully <laughs> it won't be like five more days. <laughs> all right, day 25. We got five days left. Or wait, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, so technically six days left. So... Just going to do the same thing as last time. Uh, warmed up pretty okay, as you can see. 950 on this uh, 17 here. Pretty decent. I think I almost 980 something earlier too. So, warming up pretty well. Probably just going to play through a bunch of random 17s. Uh, trying to get down that familiarization of just different types of patterns. And, uh, yeah. Probably going to play for like 30 more minutes. Nothing crazy. Usually that's how long I end up recording for uh, after I warm up. These sessions are like a half hour, 50 minutes. 50 to 70 minutes, so they're not super long, and uh, yeah, let's get started. There we go. Well, oh shit. See, when I'm if I'm doing this, how am I supposed to know that a laser's coming up? Like, does it warn you right beforehand? I don't know. I feel like that's a lot of quick thinking. I think that's like purely chart knowledge oriented. Like, there's no way if you do a standard, like, double thumb uh, on these. I still forget the names of these things. I'm so lazy to look up the terminology. But when you have your thumbs here, how the hell are you going to hit a laser? You're going to have to, like, use your... I, you can't. You actually can't. You're just going to have to, you know, afford the miss or whatever. I don't know. It's things like that where, like, sound voltage charting can be so innovative at times. But then it gets a little too out of hand as if like there there's certain things that you have to know the chart beforehand which i don't know i get it if it's like there's a scroll speed change or whatever but for like a certain patterns like i don't know i've always di I, i've always disagreed with that sort of sentiment like That was a 
actually pretty decent for me. That was a good sight read. What a bullshit ending. Oh my god. Why? What is the point? What? Oh, dude. I think I'm just too tired. I can't, I can't, I can't even come close to do any of this stuff. It just throws me off so drastically. But if I, if I turn my scroll speed too slow to, like, read those things, then I, everything's too cluttered. There we go. Okay, day 26, I think this is, so. Five days left. I took a few more days off than I wanted to. I wanted to only take, like, two days off, because uh, I was busy with some stuff, but... I ended up getting pretty tired on Sunday after my long run, so didn't have, <laughs> didn't quite have the energy to play, but nonetheless, uh, let's just get right into day 26. I did a lot better than I thought there. Or than I thought I would. That was cool. That's a that's a sick chart. No, dude. Oh my god, what was that? Dude, what was I doing? <laughs> dude. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. What a sight read. Alright. Alright, I'm too tired. <laughs> That's it for today. Or tonight. Day 25. All right, day 26, day 26. We got, now we got five days left, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm actually warming up pretty well today. I'm feeling good. I'm actually looking forward to getting some good scores today. Hopefully I can maybe even get some new 18s. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get at it. Oh, dude. I still PV'd, but God damn. I still can't 970 this. Okay, that's that is one mill material. That is easily PUC material. If I could just read that one section. Uh this is like free. Oh, nice. I think that's PUCable as well. That's a good PV. Thank God, dude. That could have been 980, but dude, I'll take that gladly. That's it? What? That's like a mid 17. 
<laughs> I, dude, I do not get the ratings in this game. Huh? I got lost. That wasn't too bad. I could probably triple A that actually. Just that one. I think it's like one or two sections I just couldn't get down. But I got the ending. That's a big PB, so I guess I can't complain too much. <laughs> Not it. Alright. I think I'm done. Honestly, this session was really good. I just got flustered near the end trying to do 18s. I'm probably not capable of anyway, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be it for day 26. Definitely... Definitely satisfied with how this uh, week generally went. Day 28. Let's get it. <laughs> nice meme ending. The screen's too tilted for me to see them. Oh, I should have laid it. That's kind of a cool chart. It's got some weird stuff in it, but. Close enough. Maybe try 970 this. got it oh my god dude i didn't think i had it at all i thought that was still like a 950 run <laughs> i think it's number three for um 18 this is a very very easy one to be fair this is definitely one of the easier ones still but nonetheless we count those honestly i think i'm just too tired to play anymore i feel very not focused so whatever i got one I wanted to add it today. I got a lot of new 18s and some PBs on current 18s. So I triple played another 18. So, all right, day 28, pretty good, pretty good. All right, day 29, two days left. I'm feeling pretty tired today. I'm trying to fix my sleep schedule. Plus, I've been running a bit more, so feeling a little out of it. Uh, reflexes don't feel great today. <laughs> So probably going to get caught off guard by some patterns that I might not remember or from sight reading something might not be, you know, on point with it. But nonetheless, I'm just going to see what I can do today. Maybe nab a few PBs on, on some things and call it a session.
bad. It's pretty close. I'm gonna do that again. I know I can pass this. I know I can pass this without a doubt. A 950 to go with it. Nineteen number two. Okay, this is definitely the most passable 20 if the lasers didn't scale with BPM for some unnecessary reason. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the... That's probably the easiest 20 by far. At least mechanically it is. What the fuck? Okay, this one's bullshit too. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that one either. I think we're done with the 20s. I was I might wrap up the session. I think it's been like 50 minutes. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty much it. It was just kind of a YOLO session. Just kind of played random stuff. <laughs> random difficulties. And yeah, the 16s were pretty clean for the most part. And then I passed a new 19. Yeah, can't complain. See you guys on the final day. Uh, which will maybe be tomorrow. Either tomorrow or Thursday. Depends. All right, day 30. It is day 30, the final day, and uh, pretty fitting nonetheless. It is actually my birthday as of recording this, so this is going to be my last Soundvolt Tech session for the 30-day challenge, and um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't got anything else. I've kind of ran out of things to say for these intros for each day. It's kind of redundant anyways. They're pretty pointless, so yeah, let's just play some 18s, play some 19s, and see what we can get. No. No. Oh, that was a good ending. 992. <laughs> yeah, the last time I played this was three months ago. <laughs> Let's see if we can pass this again. Nice. You know what? I think we will end it there. I think that's a high note we want to leave off on. My first 19 pass and my last Sound Voltex score of the 30 day challenge. I think it's cool that I was able to at least get 30 days out of this. I know it took a while to get there. A lot of stuff got in the way. I just kind of forgot about the game for a bit or just couldn't get around to playing it. Got caught up in other projects and then I had my surgery and <laughs> there was just a lot of things going on that I wasn't quite prepared for or that I didn't organize well enough. So as much as I would have loved to play this game for like a month straight and gotten so much more productivity out of it and momentum to build off of, I hope this was at least somewhat interesting to follow. And I think I was able to reasonably progress throughout this journey. I think I had a, a couple off days that I didn't perform better than my last day. 
So this is the part where I cut to the recap, where we go over everything I suck at and everything I'm probably decent at, and how I can maybe improve that stuff going forward, and maybe what game I'm going to be doing next for the 30-day challenge, because I enjoy this. I think this is a cool concept to do. I like the idea of playing a different rhythm game completely out of my zone. Well, I mean, this one isn't as out of my realm, uh, especially given my four-key background, but uh, maybe I'll tackle a completely different game that I'm at least somewhat familiar with, but have never taken the time to fully understand it. So, but until then, um, just going to cut to the recap. So for the last week, I just had a bit of fun with everything and just went for PBs or new passes on various 18s I tried out. The bad thing was that I was playing super late at night, so I ended up fizzling out a lot faster than I wanted to, but still held my own with lots of good scores. I also upped my scroll speed a bit and have been feeling generally comfortable with 770-ish as of writing this. Let's assess what I got good at in those 30 days and what I'm still not so good at. We'll start with the good. I think over time I really got the hang of one-handing stuff while using lasers, and as long as it's within my reading zone, I can pull off some really nice combos. I had trouble reading more agile patterns, or more so reacting to them in my case, but they feel a lot more natural to me now when they approach the receptors, so that's definitely a plus all around. The obvious one is my streaming ability, as I can move pretty fast if the chart allows me to, and I've shown some promise on alternating jacks on single notes. That's something I've always been able to do given I could do it on keyboard keys, so arcade buttons felt a lot easier in comparison. All in all, I think I have the basics for the game down which allowed me to squeeze out a few 18s and to score generally well on a lot of the 17s, but there's also a lot of things that are crazily holding me back from progressing much further. Not just in this game, but quite a few other rhythm games. Any patterns with variations in the BT and FX buttons completely melt my brain still. My four key senses start tingling, and I just end up hitting almost every possible button that I think is around the pattern, and it destroys my score and dignity a bit. I wish there were practice charts that solely focused on this type of stuff, because I think it helped me so much faster in learning how to decipher them. My dexterity is not only all over the place, but very, very weak in some regards. My hands are pretty small to be fair given I'm 5'6", so spreading my fingers out to hit certain patterns is pretty hard. But what makes it worse is that the flexibility in my hands is fairly weak combined with the muscles in my hands being all cattywampus too. Playing with the same four fingers for 16 years with not a lot of experience in really any other games makes your hands quite imbalanced when you try using the other fingers to do well really anything. Some patterns make sense on my right hand, some make sense on the other, but the general consensus is that I'm not proficient in any of them. This is why I'd imagine players of any game that require you to incorporate full usage of your hands can pick up this game like almost nothing, because the movements here aren't super technical necessarily, but they require you to have fairly dexterous hands that more mechanically demanding games offer. This is motivation for me to pick up a game that teaches me this down the line, but perhaps just more time in general with this game will help me develop that better too. Lastly, technical lasers humble me to no end. If I get lost in the sauce, I have no idea how to readjust, and I get super dizzy. This is without a shadow of a doubt due to a lack of exposure, because I genuinely think I can get really good at lasers given it's a very feel-based type of play. But when the lasers mesh together, my eyes start to lose track of what's going on. Does everything I list really just boil down to a lack of experience and just simply not playing enough? Sure, I think that's a fair conclusion, but I think it's important to note how my hands responded to this game given my background as a 4 specialist, and Soundvoltex overall gave me a clear-cut example of what I need to work on for not just this game, but if I want to get into a game that requires anything outside my index and middle fingers. A quick side note about the charting side of things, I'm actually surprised how much more fleshed out and unique it is compared to DDR, given it's made by the same company. There's some cool ideas here and there, there's some risks being taken, some of which make me want to go insane, at least within the older packs. But some of the more technically sounding songs were charted quite beautifully on the rare occasion it warranted it. Seeing flammed technical rhythms and whatnot were more than refreshing enough for me to respect this game 10 times more. Again, some of the pattern choices in the older packs are absolutely jank though, so in my opinion, just get the latest three iterations which are Heavenly Haven, Vivid Wave, and Exceed Gear. Gravity Wars was okay at times, but I ended up just not liking it that much, and Jolene told me to not even touch the first two games, so I just listened to her advice on that. Overall, I think the 30-day challenge was a success. I had a ton of fun playing this game, and it was an awesome learning experience. And it was the first time I've truly been humbled by a rhythm game before. Getting my hands on one of these controllers was a fantastic choice, and I definitely want to continue playing this game at least here and there. And if you want to try it yourself, I'll link some things in the description below. 
Let me know what you guys think of this idea in the comments, as I'm definitely interested in trying this with another rhythm game. It doesn't necessarily have to be a game I've never touched, but it can be one that you guys think I should try and take seriously for 30 days to see what happens. But until then, this was my 30 day Soundable Text journey, and thanks for watching. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you want to support the channel for more content like this, come on over and become a patron. And hey, drop a sub if you're new here too. I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next, and take care.